All right, so the first one we're gonna go over is the filter. Now, if you double press FX1 here, of course that allows you to choose which effect you want on that particular slot. And also when you choose the effects, it has the setup for each effect here. So let's go through the filter setup first. So the first part is HP. Of course, that stands for high pass filter. So all this does is it controls the slope of the high pass filter. You may have seen before, you know, a 12 dB filter or a 24 dB filter in regards to synthesizers or stuff like that. So all that means is essentially the slope of the filter. So 12 dB is less of a slope, so it's not quite as steep. Whereas a 24 dB filter, as you can see on the illustration here, is a much steeper slope. So essentially all that means is it's going to cut out or filter out more frequencies when you're on the 24 dB mode than on the 12 dB mode. Of course you have the choice between 12 and 24 for the high pass as well as for the low pass filter. So that's up to you. I'll just leave it on the default for right now. ENV of course is envelope and all that does is it affects which parameter the filter envelope will affect. So we'll go over this in a little bit, but the two choices you have are width and base. Controls whether the filter is affected by the hold parameter in the amp section. You either have the choice of on or off. Q is just another way of talking about resonance. If you're familiar with synths, most synths have a resonance knob on their filter. So in this case, Q is equivalent to resonant. So you can set Q to affect just the high pass filter, the low pass filter, or both, or you can choose to have it off. So by default, it's set to both. Now distortion, you want to kind of look at that more like headroom rather than actually distorting something like with a distortion pedal or an effect. This knob basically makes it so you can control the amount of headroom you have. So the higher your distortion, the less headroom you have with the signal going through the filter. Now I'm not going to go over headroom too much here, but for the most part you want to keep this lower. Um, but yes, if you're wondering, you can also use this kind of as an effect to actually distort the signal a little bit. But, um, you know, again, it is mostly meant to control your headroom. Okay, so that's it for the parameters on there in the setup. So if you just hit yes to select the filter and then hit no to get out of there, we get to the main section of the filter. So base and width, this is kind of interesting the way to look at it is essentially base allows it to act as a high pass filter whereas width allows it to act as a low pass filter you'll notice they're linked here um, up at the top which just means that they affect each other so the way it is by default base is always set all the way down and width is set all the way up so if you want to use this filter as a high pass filter, then all you have to do is sweep bass upwards. So I have a, a resampled beat here. So that's what it sounds like. So if I want, again, if I want to have a, low, a high pass filter, then I'm just gonna sweep the bass and I'm gonna leave width where it is. So you'll notice that the higher I turn the bass, the more it acts like a high pass filter.
And then so with width, if I want it to act as a low pass filter, you want to leave base at the very bottom there, and then you want to sweep width backwards. So that's essentially the easy way to look at bass and width, but really, you know, it's not super important what they actually do. All bass does is sets the bass cutoff frequency of the filter, whereas width controls the distance between the low pass and high pass cutoff frequencies. Now, if that just sounds weird to you, don't necessarily worry about it. You just have to know that how to, essentially, you all you have to know is how to get a low pass and a high pass filter out of this. But if you want to mess with the bass and the width, you'll notice that, you know, say you have your width in the middle here. You know, if you mess with the bass frequency and sweep it, you get a different effect than if you just had width all the way maxed. So in other words, if you wanna really mess around with your filter, bass and width are really good parameters to mess with using an LFO. You could use one of them to affect the bass frequency and then you could use another LFO to affect the width parameter. So that's definitely, you could create some interesting stuff with that. So moving on, the Q again is essentially the resonance. So if we're messing with the low pass filter here using the width, say we add a little bit of resonance get that real squelchy kind of sound. But of course, uh, if you've ever messed around with resonance or cue, you'll know that uh, too much of it can be a bad thing. Like there, for example, it can kind of boost frequencies that you don't necessarily want. That's another way of looking at Q and resonance is you're essentially giving whatever the cutoff is, the cutoff frequency with bass and width, Q will essentially boost that frequency even more. So that's, that's the best way to look at it. Now depth controls how much the filter affects, how much the envelope of the filter affects the cutoff frequencies. Again, the best way to, to figure out what it does is to just listen to it and mess around with it. So you'll notice that depth goes negative much like it does on a lot of other synths. So essentially, if you have the depth negative, the envelope is reversed. So really the best way to look at an envelope, so check this out for example. This is the filter wide open, base at zero, width at 127, so there's no filtering happening here. So if we go to the low pass filter again and sweep it downwards, you'll notice that it's already in the 60s here, and it still kind of sounds like there's no filtering happening to it. Whereas if we turn the depth back down to zero, you'll notice that with the low pass filter about halfway here, there's no envelope happening, so it's actually processing the signal with the full amount of filter. So depth is a good way to look at it, but that, that essentially means envelope depth. 
basically a cool trick you can do with the envelope depth is another form of sweeping basically. So if you have the depth all the way up like this and you have your filter set a certain way, then you could use the depth to sweep it. So I'm not going to go too much into envelopes right now, but essentially if you're not familiar with an envelope, it's basically just a way of allowing part, in this case, part of the filter to affect the sound rather than all of it. So ultimately that's what an envelope does. Another application of this, rather than have an L two LFOs mess around with the bass and the width, you could just use one LFO to mess around with the envelope depth. If you want more information on how envelopes work, I would highly suggest Googling something where you can see an, an illustration of it, especially if you're more of a visual person. But ultimately, if you're just relying on your ears, which I highly recommend you do, then the depth, you know, all you need to do is listen to what it does and then mess around with the knobs a little bit to just kind of understand what it actually does. So that's it for the depth for now. We'll move on. But, uh, you know, if you have any more questions about envelopes below, definitely leave a comment. The last two parameters that we have here are attack and decay. Attack and decay also control part of the envelope. So if you've ever messed around with a synth, you'll know that it has usually has a depth control and it also has an attack and decay. You may have heard about the ADSR envelope, which essentially stands for attack, decay, sustain, and release. So in this case, the only two parameters that you have for the filter envelope are attack and decay. So again, unfortunately, the Octatrack doesn't have illustrations like some of the other electron machines do. So hopefully you've had the opportunity to mess around with some of the other electron gear as far as envelopes go. But if not, again, I highly recommend you Google like an illustration of what an ADSR envelope looks like. Normally an envelope, an ADSR envelope controls essentially the volume. It controls how quickly the volume comes up, how quickly it stays at a certain volume and then it also controls how quickly the volume comes back down. So that's that's probably the simplest way I can describe an, a normal volume envelope. But in this case, this envelope controls the filter as I was kind of talking about with the depth. When your attack is set to zero, the envelope essentially just goes to full volume immediately. Well, in this case, of course, it's it's affecting the filter. So when your attack is set to zero, the filter kicks in immediately. If you set the higher you set your attack, the longer it takes for the filter to gradually go up and reach its full potential. So if we listen to this, so I have my depth up a little bit, probably about halfway. I have my attack up. And you can hear this kind of like whooshing sound. Now the reason that's happening is because the attack is essentially taking the depth and turning it, it's, it's basically doing the equivalent of this. But rather than do that kind of thing with your hand, the attack parameter does that for you. 
So again, the attack makes it so the higher the attack is, the longer it takes for the filter to kick in, essentially. So. So you could essentially set the attack to kind of breathe with the time of the song. That's one thing you can do. Now decay is kind of the other end of that equation. So decay controls how long it takes for the filter to come back down. So whereas the attack essentially delays the filter from kicking in, the decay, if you look at it this way, the sound starts out filtered and then depending on where your decay is, the sound will end unfiltered. So I know that might be confusing at first, but the more you play around with those parameters, the better you'll understand it. You know, in my videos, I like to get technical about things in the sense that I, I like to at least explain what it's supposed to do. But ultimately, you know, so a lot of that stuff can get confusing. And ultimately, all that matters is what it sounds like. It really doesn't matter what it's doing under the hood. And all you need to know is how to use the parameters to get the sound that you want. You know, you don't have to be able to explain them to other people necessarily. But if you know how to get a certain sound with these parameters, then that's all that matters, ultimately. If you have any questions about any of these parameters individually, then feel free to leave a comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I'll just go ahead and leave it there for now. I am going to go through all of the effects here coming up. So I'm just going to go through them all one by one and create a series about the Octatrack effects because there's so many and the other interesting thing is that each page has some different uh, effects that the other one doesn't so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there for now you know I want to try and keep these videos shorter hope that helps you guys again leave a comment down below please like and subscribe if you liked this video and you got value out of it and I will see you guys in the next video.